What's up everybody, my name is Shy Boy, and this is the first installment on my new series called Drip and Drag where I sit down with a local drag artist and talk all about what life is like as a drag performer. My first guest is going to be the master of the mic, the babe of brunch, the Barbie to my Ken. It is the lovely, the beautiful Hazel Sanchez Bell. Hi. And thank you so, 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 so much for doing this. Of course. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Yeah? This little journey that we're creating for 2022. I just appreciate you waking up so early on a Sunday morning. Because I know you had a show last night, and you are you're out last night, and I was out last night, and this is early for drag performers. Oh, yeah. But you also do brunches. Yes. So, like... How did you become like the babe of brunch? So I do it at Big Grove Brewery down in Iowa City. And um, I started like, we did one for Pride one time mm -hmm. before pre-COVID. And we only did one and then I was like, okay. And so then like COVID was still like a thing and it's still a thing, but like everything was kind of like shutting down and like reopening. And so it was like iffy with like bookings again. And I was like in the car with Levi and I was like, we need to bring, I was like, I want to bring brunch back. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, I want something for like a different audience. Because like, we have that problem where we run into so many people and like we live in a college town. Yeah. So you, like people in their mid thirties and twenties aren't going to go to like the college town bars and see a drag performance because they don't want to be around all these like 19 year olds running around. I, I know a lot of people who would, would like say something about that. They'd be like, yeah, I want to go to one of your shows, but I'm kind of old. Yeah, exactly. And it's <laughs> not like a bad thing. It's just like they don't, they'd rather just go to something else or whatever. It, it's and not their crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, let's just do something. So I just emailed Big Grove and then like a couple days went by and I got an email back and like, yeah, let's like have a meeting. And then we just did it from like month to month. And then I think April will be our one year this year. Wow, already? Yeah. But but now you're doing like even more brunches because I saw you're hosting one at a place called Tavern Blue. Yes. Yep. Tavern so, Blue just opened like a while ago. Did they reach out to you or did you reach out to them? So uh, Virgo um, works there and okay. Jackie worked there also and they were talking about doing one forever ago. Okay. And like. I feel like that's another problem with a lot of these girls and, you know, drag people, entertainment. They're always talking about it, but they're not doing something about it. Yes. I'm like, use your platform and do something about it. Well, that, that's kind of like how I'm, that's kind of like how I'm creating this is because like I literally, so like this whole thing came to me in a, it sounds so dumb. It came to me in a dream, but no, I had a dream that I sat down with artists and I was like, that I can make that happen. And instead of just like putting it to the side and like, eh, someday I just like, I literally had this stream like two weeks ago, and now we're here. Exactly. So I, I am definitely somebody of action, but I know a lot of people who are like, hey, let's do this, and then nothing ever happens. Yeah. And so they talked about it, and I was like, let's you know set up a meeting, and like let's do this. And then it just went from there. Because like, I'm a very, like, I don't look at it because I'm very dumb. <laughs> but when it comes to like money and business, I'm like get the shit done, let's write it down, let's have a meeting, let's do X, Y, Z and get it done. So, very business forward. That's brilliant to have because like doing this, I don't think people realize that this costs us more money than we usually make. Yeah. So when we have that opportunity to actually make a dollar out of this, like you gotta have a plan. I am terrible at, or actually I'm great at underselling myself. Somebody reaches out to me and they're like, how does uh, this much sound for this far of a travel? I'm like, you're, you're booking me. Yeah, okay. I don't haggle. I don't be like, well, I'm worth this. Yeah. I'm traveling this far, so I need ABC with XYZ and all the letters in between. I don't... The whole alphabet. Yeah. I don't have that. And I feel like that's what a lot of like drag artists that like start out don't understand. And then it kind of just like they just stop doing drug because they're like, I'm not making X, Y, Z, like I'm not good enough or whatever. Like I've been doing this for six years. So like I was at that boat too, but now like understanding everything, I'm like, okay, moving forward. Like obviously I'm my own like boss. I'm my own person. Like I have to sell myself to it like extent to get what I want out of it. You know, you've been doing drag six years. Mm -hmm. I'm old. I've been doing drag nine years. Nine? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Remember, I'm I'm old. We know. I'm just kidding. Was there something that made you want to start drag or Um, I did like so growing up I just did like I feel like I was turning away from you. 
It's okay. But growing up, I was a dancer for like 17 years. Okay. And so I like stopped dance after high school. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then I like dabbled into like gender identity and like being non-binary and like understanding all that and stuff because mm-hmm. I came out in high school senior year. Yeah. So like I didn't really like I just knew like gay and I was like okay. And then I just like <laughs> realized like there's more to it like there's a big umbrella system. So I just like dabbled in like the boy makeup and like gender bending and all mm-hmm. that and everything. And then I just like worked at the garden in Des Moines and then saw people doing drag and I was like okay. oh. I was like, well, I do the makeup and I have the dance moves. What can I create? And so then I just like talked to local people like Tayona Diamond, mm-hmm. Demita Sanchez, um, Sanitha Sanchez. Like I just talked to all of them like to get their input and stuff. And then Robin Graves actually put me in drag my first time and we did like a duet yes. or whatever. And then I just like kind of like went from there. And then I just got tips and tricks from Do you have makeup. any pictures of your first time in drag? Oh, oh yeah. I want you to send those to me, okay. and uh, okay. if I may share, yeah. just because like my first picture in drag is god awful. Oh yeah, we my, my posture is like this, and like it is just the worst facial hair you've ever seen, and yeah, but, trust me. Same. But I think it's good to show like where you started versus where you are now. But I'm also lazy when it comes to makeup, so I'm like, okay, like this morning I literally slept into like. 9.30 and left my house by like 10.15. And you still look glorious. Like, I'll just quick shave, quick shower and... Yeah, I gotta do the same thing. I'll do, I gotta do a quick shave after this because I gotta I go work. I was shower. <laughs> or shave. Uh, yeah, I'll shave before work. But no, the, the morning stubble is a good book. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I mean, when you're shaving cream, <laughs> I just took a razor and said, let's go. Uh, I took a stippling brush and said, all right, this will work. <laughs> Um, I have a question for you. Yes. Talking about makeup, there's such a difference, I feel, that people don't understand for, like, drag makeup versus, like, everyday wear makeup, but also, okay. like, king makeup versus, like, queen makeup. The, all the, isn't, like, all the contouring and highlight just complete opposite? Because, like, I see you're, like, highlighted on the outside yeah. and inside of your nose. I, like, contoured the outside because I want to, like, make it seem bigger. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I guess I never understood that. And like you guys like we, we chisel- contour down. Yep, we chisel our cheeks because you want it to be shadowed to look like you have a mortifying jaw. Is this jaw? Cheek? Not cheekbone? 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 This is your jaw. Cheekbone. <laughs> I'm terrible at anatomy, okay? Drop out. Same. <laughs> but yeah, like the difference is crazy and I, w- I don't wear this as everyday makeup. Yeah, me either. I don't wear makeup every day me because either. like what it does to my skin is already terrible. So. Especially when I'm drunk and I forget to take it off. <laughs> the amount of times I've shown up at my brunch like from the night before and makeup from the night before. I just take my lashes off and sleep like this. <laughs> I'm like, you good sleep, to go. Sleep like a vampire. Yep. Uh, I don't move. <laughs> mimosa. First word. <laughs> or I'm like, lash, lash. <laughs> like, if I sleep in makeup, I know I have makeup on, so then I don't move. Yeah. It's weird. Loki will come up and like lick me and I'm like, there was like one morning that I woke up my whole nose was gone. I said, damn it, dog. So you travel a lot, right? Yeah. Where's been like your favorite place you've gone? Probably Kansas City, I would say. Love Kansas City. I was just there a couple weeks ago. I love Kansas City. Same. I feel like it's like a whole different community down there. Like everyone's like in drag, you always get those people like not people, but you always get those like areas where it's like, I'm this level and you're this level and you're this level type mm-hmm. thing, like leveled drag. And yeah. I feel like Kansas City is like a full flat surface, like no one's competing down there. They're all just a big ass sisterhood and they're okay. like, here we go. Like, like Missy B's, like their show cast is like 12 or 13 like different people and they just like rotate every weekend. I'm yeah. like, that's amazing. Like, and bring in guests. Like, is there somewhere like you want to go travel to perform? Um, I really want to go to like Tennessee, like southern states, like Florida. Like I've been to Florida mm-hmm. and stuff, but like I haven't like performed yet there. Yeah. So I like, kind of like Dublin there because I feel like I just keep going like north or like east. <laughs> and like the south that I go is like just to Kansas, Kansas City. City. <laughs> I mean, I've been to Texas for a newcomer, but I was in a pageant, so I didn't like run around to yeah. other bars or anything and I was like focused on winning the crown and I didn't win but 
Yeah, t- uh, Tennessee's fun. You should check out Play Nashville. They yes. do their open stages on like Thursdays or something, but it's such a good crowd and it's just such a fun place. Yes. So, do you like pageants or shows better? Ooh. I'm a pageant girl. You're a pageant girl? Yeah. I like pageants because I feel my fantasy more, but I don't like pageants because the stress level yeah. that comes with it and the anxiety that comes with it. Ugh. But I like shows too because I feel like shows bring out like different people and like pageant people are pageant people. So like they're gonna be at a pageant. Yeah. But like not any like r- randoms are gonna like dabble in. Like you'll get that, but not always. Yeah. Yeah. Pageants can be like, they can be a lot of money. Yeah. The, I hear how much like people spend on their outfits and dear Lord. I go. <laughs> that goes back to uh, this ain't cheap. No. This is not cheap. It's not. And, like, I always say, like, at shows, like, the biggest thing that we can have from other people is supporting local people. Yeah. Like, because, you yeah, we have Drag Race, and we have all this X, Y, Z, like, shows and stuff happening. But, like, we can't get there without your support. Like, they were once us. You supported them to get there. So support us in the return. And don't compare us to them. Because we are not them. <laughs> we're all equal. Okay? So, like, how many mentors did you have, like, throughout your entire journey, would you say? Um, uh, probably two or three, I'd yeah. say, for sure. We have amazing people around here. Actually, yeah. a, a lot of people I know in drag are just, like, some of the most amazing people. It can be a good community if you, it's treated right. It doesn't come without drama. Well. <laughs> you got drama with some people? Always. <laughs> I'm always talked about. <laughs> I see my own horn, but whatever. <laughs> it happens. Okay, do you have kids? No. no. I'm not talking dog. Oh, I have a dog. No. Oh, drag kids. Drag kids. No. Yeah. Don't want them. Same. No, thank you. Uh, I, yeah. Legs close. <laughs> oh, I think it was no birth shot. here. <laughs> so you're not the mother of my future children? Nope. I actually don't. I don't want, like, drag kids. I'll be, I'll be the cool uncle. Without taking on like all the responsibility, I'll be the drunk aunt. I'm not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. But <laughs> I'm not a regular aunt. mom. I'm a drunk aunt. Literally, <laughs> that's really a new tagline. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't want kids. Like right now, I feel like I just have to like focus on me. And when yeah. I focus on me, like I'll help people. Yeah. But that's because I helped you. Does not mean you're, you know. Yeah, anybody comes to me with a question, I'll be like, yes, this is what I would do. This is my experience. Is this the correct way? No yeah. idea. Like, I, when I first did my makeup, nobody showed me how me and my roommate of the time, we just chose to get in drag one day. No experience. Uh, that roommate is now a professional makeup artist who redid my look five years later. But, like, I had nobody to really ask about, like, makeup and stuff. So now when people ask me, I'm like, yes, yeah, so this is what I needed to know. So It's definitely a learning process yeah. and a learning curve for sure. Because when I first started, I was, like, just doing pretty much, like, light boy makeup and popping a wig on. Yep. And I remember Sunnytha pulled me off one time. She goes, I see, I don't see Hazel. And I was like, what do you see? She goes, I see the other person. I was like, oh. Okay. She's like, just darken it up a little bit. You're on stage. Don't get washed out. I was like, all right, it sounds good. How did you end up picking your name? Like, how how did Hazel? My eye it? color. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> yes. I was talking with Demita, who's my mom, and she was like, "What about this? What about this?" She, then she was like, "What's your eye color?" I said, "Hazel." She goes, "That's it." I said, "Okay, sounds good." And it's stuck. Ever you've never yeah. changed it? Nope. Same. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to either. I don't want to. I don't want to rebrand. No. It's too much work. Yeah. Like, it does fit you very well. And, like, my little followers or whatever, my little hazelnuts. <laughs> Jackie has her little frosties. I got my little hazelnuts. Because <laughs> it's a nut. <laughs> no, uh, my, my fan base is called the Shy Babes. Cute. I live. I so, live. So. I don't think I've actually ever called anyone hazelnut. <laughs> like, I just, like, I try to, like, brand it in a way that's not, like, weird. That, that's fair. Like my I, little nutty bars or something? I don't know. I think I just have a hard time, mostly because I don't think of myself as somebody with fans. So I don't want to be like, ah, yes, my shy babes. Like, I don't know. I feel like that's almost like 
conceited or egotistical or something like that. So I just, is there a name for them? Yes. Do I use it ever? No. no. Oh, I just sneeze. I can feel it coming. How long have you and Levi been together? Um, a year and August, September, October, November, December, January, February, six months, year and a half. Nice. How are you and Darian? Me and Darian have been together for two years and some odd months. She's back here. <laughs> well, that, that's more than a regular lesbian relationship goes. You're doing it, great. It, it's one of my longer ones. But like, so it's tough to like date as a drag artist because like, especially like the type of drag I do, it's so like magic mic and like sensual and she doesn't get jealous ever because she she's actually like the mean girl's mom she's the one recording and like yes body roll body roll hump hump yes and she's recording the whole time like i found my mean girl's mom and there you go. she she is a cool mom and just there's no jealousy we communicate about everything like anytime somebody does try to like take me home i'm like baby see that girl over there she thinks i'm hot <laughs> And like that's the thing, and like dating wise, like as drag queens, you're always gonna struggle to find someone that's one, gonna find you attractive. Two, understanding your scheduling, your lifestyle with drag. Yeah. And three, understanding with your lifestyle that like it comes with people that are going to like come up to you and like, you know, want to take you home or want to do this or whatever, and they yeah. have to like realize like you're not interested just because they're interested. Yes. So, so you find me attractive, right? Um, Here's my other half. <laughs> I am two people. Like, literally, two people in one body. Can you handle that? <laughs> most can't. Most can't. Yeah. Me and Shy Boy, we are two different people. Yeah. Shy Boy's an extrovert, Shyan's an introvert. Like, we're, we're, we are separated people, different personalities and everything. So when somebody, see, when somebody sees me out in public in drag, yeah, I'm excited. I'm kind of flirty and all that. Out of drag, I'm like... Okay. Like, who, who dis? And that's a very important thing to bring up is like, if you do do drag, it's like up to you. But like, what I've noticed is like separating the two from like personal life and like business life, it's like such an easier route than mm -hmm. trying to combine both of them and yeah. mash them together. Because like, I'm like the same way. Like, Hazel's like, oh, you know, like all out and about and flirty, and then like chase them to the bar like in sweatpants and like just sit back in the back of the crowd and like, hi chilling hanging out like i'll talk to you but like yeah i'm just there were, were you scared the first time you ever talked um yeah because like i've heard the process i'm like that's that all sounds like uncomfortable is it no you get used to it um so speaking of like tucking everything since you're on the opposite side of the spectrum doing little drag kings do you, like what's your step process for like getting ready performance wise um, after makeup because like my, my makeup scheme I hardly change it unless I'm like doing an outfit that calls for like a little bit of like dashes of color here or there but otherwise like I tape my chest and I don't have a small chest it's so annoying I do not have a small chest and uh, the phrase is tit, uh, tits to pits so you I use KT tape you can use like any tape and you like start in the middle and you pull it back to your pit yeah, and the tape has torn my, like, I actually have marks on my chest from, like, the tape tearing. So, the things I put my body through. Well, what's your normal coffee order? Ice caramel macchiato. Caramel macchiato. Only because that's what I get from Duncan. Oh. What's your drink order? Malibu Sprite. <laughs> Last night I yelled at Shy Boy, I said, can I get a double Malibu? Thinking that he would know what I mix it with, and he's like, just Malibu? I said... With Sprite? <laughs> I was unaware that you drank anything besides mimosas and Fireball. <laughs> At the bar, yeah. Oh, girl, them Fireball shots. Oh, get me together. I don't like Fireball, but if somebody's buying me a shot, I'll do Fireball. My favorite liquor is, is uh, free liquor, so... <laughs> yes, free liquor is the best liquor. So if you could have given advice to a younger self or just like you could give advice to like somebody starting out in drag what would it be um find a name stick with it create your platform and don't give up because it takes time yes and i feel like a lot of people don't know that it takes time and so they don't understand that it takes time and they're like 
I'm done after like a year of being in it. And I'm yeah. Like, That's... I, I think we get like just as a drag community in general get so discouraged so quickly. Yeah. Like I get discouraged with costuming because I thrift and then Darian adds things. But like even but then I need it altered because I'm a in between size female. I'm either a schmedium or a melarge and nothing fits me well. So <laughs> So I get discouraged with costuming. I'm, like, not a design girl. Like, I literally, like, can't think of... That's probably why I don't sew, because I literally can't, like, think of, like, patterns or anything to, like, do. Yeah. So I'm right there with you that I'm like, uh, what do I wear? What what do I want made? <laughs> like, when people are like, oh, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know. What do you think looks good on me and make it? think of something I don't know yeah I always have to pick a song first and be like what can I see any person doing wearing this song or doing this song wearing (laughs) words yes yeah so like when I created my Cruella look I was like I know I want to do a Cruella look and be do a I want to be your dog I knew I knew I wanted to do that anything else if I pick a song I'm like looking at my clothes I'm like god damn it I hate all of this hate it all yeah so what's your like song picking process? Um, whatever. I just. Uh, what Shania Twain have I not done today? <laughs> Do you like to stick to like the top forties of every year? Um, usually, especially like if I'm in Iowa City. Yeah. Since it's just like a college town, that's all they like listen to. Yeah. But then I also like to throw it back to like the nineties and two thousands. Yeah. Because I hope they know those. We just did a 90s show, and I, I got to co-host it. I said, okay, how many of you guys were actually born in the 90s? Like, four hands went up. I said, how many of you were born after the 90s? Half the bar. I was like, y'all in for a night? I hope you're cultured. Like, <laughs> Literally. I had the hardest time picking music for 90s, because it was a great decade for female artists. And... I, as Shy Boy, I personally don't like doing female artists unless yeah. it's like a cover and then you, the cover's never as good as the original. Yeah. So me picking a song, I was like, what the hell do I do? It was a great year for rap, but I'm like, I'm somebody who's a stickler for knowing the words. And I was like, I don't know the words. <laughs> that makes one of us. <laughs> Well, I just, I don't know. I like being fully polished, especially if my costume game is very uh, lacking. So where I'm going to lack in one department, I'm going to shine in another. Makeup. <laughs> the For me. S- the smolder. I'm, I'm not even going to say a word. I'm just going to make eye contact with everybody. All right, well, I will let you get on with your Sunday shenanigans, a.k.a. a nap. Oh, and yeah. uh, once again, I just appreciate you for doing this. Any final shout outs or anything you want to say to whoever is viewing? Um, yeah, make sure you support local artists. Follow both of us. Um, our little tags will be below us. Yep. And thank you for having me for the first little drip and drag drip podcast, and drag. vlog, daytime, whatever um, you want, whatever your fantasy <laughs> is, we're here. Whatever you want to describe this as, you are correct. Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe, follow. Describe and subscribe. <laughs> Send us a Venmo, whatever you want to do. Oh, yeah, money. And also, always remember, the more energy you give us, the we... The more energy... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is it? The more I, I energy you give us... The more energy we give, give you. you. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So go again. <laughs> and on a final note, for everybody, always remember, the more energy you give us, the more, the more energy, energy we, we give, give you. you. Bye, guys. My eyes are watering now. Tell me to look in the outside. <laughs> well, okay. I, I, whenever I feel a sneeze coming on, like I want to sneeze because it's almost like a freaking like orgasm. You don't want to just like sit there and build up and then be disappointed. It's like an orgasm for your nose because once you sneeze, you're just so relieved.